What's up everyone, Tate down here, welcome back to another video. With Need for Speed Heat coming out very soon, and with me being such a Need for Speed fan, I wanted to make my wish list for Need for Speed Heat on some of the improvements that I want to see in the game and what I want to actually see be part of the game this year. Let's get right into this. So the first thing that I have on my wish list, which to me is very important that I want to see in this year's game for Need for Speed Heat, is more of a police presence. Free roaming for police in the game would be epic because I just feel like Need for Speed 2015 with the free roaming police was pretty special. If they seen you speeding, driving crazy, driving on the wrong side of the road or whatever, they would start a pursuit. And if you were to pull over, you'd be able to pay the fine, and I think it was like two or $300 fines. But if you were to continue to outrun the police, they would start to get aggressive, and they would try to arrest you. And if you evade them, you'd get a lot of XP, but the more and more and the longer that it takes, the higher the risk. So if they end up pulling you over, the fine can be like tens of thousands of dollars. So that was pretty epic to be in the game. But Need for Speed Payback was a very soft police presence. In free roam, there was no police presence, but in different races, there was a police presence. So the outrunning races, there was always police presence, or some of the other races, maybe you got set up by a racer. So there was a slight police presence, but it wasn't that epic. And even if they were to have the spike strips come out and your tires were to get popped, they would automatically regenerate after about 20 seconds if you were continuing to drive. So. It wasn't that great of police presence in Need for Speed Payback. Hopefully in Need for Speed Heat, they do have a bigger presence and there is police free roaming. Next is a big one for me, which is why I love Need for Speed Heat, and that is more customization options. Need for Speed 2015, in my opinion, was way better than Need for Speed Payback on this aspect because Need for Speed 2015 had a lot of customization options that were pretty cool. You can make the car look epic, different body kits and things like that. Need for Speed Payback, however, didn't have so many customization options. They had maybe four options for every type, so spoilers, front bumpers, rear bumpers, there was only like four things for each category, which to me wasn't too special. Headlights, the only thing that was customizing on them was different color of headlights. There was not different styles of headlights and different things like that. So I want to see more customization options in Need for Speed Heat. I want you to be able to make, if you want a tuner, if you want something like a Fast and Furious car, something with a really epic body kit or different options and making the car look very unique, that's what I want. I want to have a unique car. I don't want to make something that potentially somebody else, because there's not too many customization options, somebody else has a very similar style of car. So I want to see more options for that reason. The next is the quests to unlock different customization options. So Need for Speed Payback had this, which are the speed traps and drift zones and the different things like that, which to me, I honestly enjoyed them. They are a lot of fun to do, but you have to do so many of them and complete so many of them of each different type to unlock different things. So you could unlock the front bumpers by completing X amount of drift zones, for example, and you'd be able to complete side skirts and have them unlocked if you were to do uh, speed traps, X amount of them. So I just want to be able to fully customize them whenever I can afford it and just purchase them as if you could in Need for Speed 2015. To have to complete and unlock certain things by doing certain speed traps and stuff like that, I did not like that at all because you couldn't fully customize until you were able to complete all, enough of those things to be able to fully customize your vehicle. So I want to see that gone in the next game. Next would be to be bringing back more cards. Need for Speed 2015 had quite a few cards and I really enjoyed that. Need for Speed Payback didn't have as many or didn't have the ones that I wanted. I know Need for Speed Heat apparently is not going to have any Toyotas, which sucks because I love the Supra, but... I really want to see more cars return for the next game and cars that have been left out for years. I hear the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution is making a return, so I'm pretty excited for that, but I want to see more than just that. Next would be to bring the years of the vehicles back in the game. Need for Speed 2015, if you were to go into the store, the garage, and to go and purchase a vehicle, it would tell you, for example, a 2015 
Ford Mustang or a 1970 Ford Mustang. Need for Speed Payback did not have that. It would basically just say Mustang, Ford Mustang. And to me, that sucks because if you want to buy an old muscle car, I'm very particular and I want to know exactly what year I am purchasing. For example, Mustangs and BMWs, there was quite a few Mustangs and BMWs and they did specify some of the Mustangs as a Mustang boss and some of the BMWs as whatever model they are. But there was some that were so similar that they could be anywhere from a 2014 to a 2017 and there was quite a few of them. For me, I want to know exactly what year the vehicle is whenever I'm playing the game because that to me makes it more special. I know exactly what vehicle I purchased, a 2015 Ford Mustang as opposed to just a Ford Mustang with an unknown year. Next would be to lower the cost of the cars to be more realistic. Need for Speed 2015, for example, a cheap Volvo or a Volkswagen Rabbit, uh, Volkswagen Golf, 1980s roughly, would be around eight grand to purchase and then you can fully customize it however you wanted and pay for that. But the car, just the base car, was about eight grand. Need for Speed Payback is about twenty grand. So it was a bigger price difference for the same vehicles as opposed to what they were previously costing for Need for Speed 2015. And I just didn't enjoy that. The main reason for that is for most of the races, you're still making the same amount per race. It's just now you have to pay a lot more for your cars. And I just did not enjoy that. I want the prices to be more realistic. If you know you're buying a pretty cheap car, it shouldn't be something that is 20, 30, 40,000. Some cars that were around 50,000, I remember them for Need for Speed 15 being about 20 grand. And in Need for Speed Payback, they're 50 grand. I was not on board with that. And the main reason for that is for my channel, I do like making Need for Speed car builds. And to have the price of the cars go up, I just did not like that because I couldn't make the car builds enough because I couldn't afford to purchase the cars like I once did. I want them to be more realistic pricing for the vehicles instead of how they were for Need for Speed Payback. Next would be a better tuning system for cars. Need for Speed Payback had the cars that you had to buy. I really hated that. I want to be able to purchase the performance parts. I want to purchase certain things and different levels of each part. And if you can fully get the most expensive thing by unlocking through story mode like you could in Need for Speed 2015, that's what I want to do. I don't want to make purchasing uh, cards and having a gamble of if it's going to benefit and make my car faster or not or change different aspects. I want to just purchase the performance parts for my vehicle like you could in Need for Speed 2015. Next would be using the same car for different race types. That is something that is pretty huge for me. Need for Speed 2015, I used a 1990 Ford Mustang Fox body and I used that for the entire game. For drag racing, uh, drifting, or just regular racing, you could tune the car in different ways. So if you purchased a vehicle, you could tune it as a racing car or you could tune it as a drifting car. And that was pretty special. I was able to use my car for any racing style that I want. But for Need for Speed Payback, you had to go to a different dealership. I understand for off-road, you shouldn't be able to use the same vehicle for off-road races. You should have an off-road type vehicle or one that's prepared for off-road races. But things like drag racing, drifting, racing, you should be able to use the same vehicle if you were able to adjust. I want to just be able to adjust what you're able to do and adjust the settings for the vehicle to make it acceptable for different race styles. So I want that to happen. And the last thing, which I just mentioned a couple minutes ago, which is the ability to use the same car for the whole game and not needing to buy expensive cars just to progress in the story. So for Need for Speed 2015, like I said, I used the 1990 Ford Mustang Fox body for the whole game. Need for Speed Payback, at the start, for each racing style, you had to purchase a different vehicle. You couldn't use the same vehicle. So for drag racing, you had to purchase a vehicle that was specifically used for drag racing for the outrunning races, for the regular races, for drifting, for every different style off-roading, you have to have a different vehicle. And as you progress in the story, you have to buy a different vehicle and a more expensive vehicle and one that's a higher level. So it was very expensive to go and have to buy these vehicles. I even had to go and buy, I think a Lamborghini for the drag racing, just to be able to beat them for story, just to be able to beat the game. I'm the type of person that I would rather have a muscle car, something that's pretty epic. 
uh, like a Camaro or something with big tires and use that as drag racing because to me that's what drag racing is as opposed to buying a luxury vehicle like a Lamborghini for drag racing. So I really wish you were able to do that in the next game instead of having to need to buy specific vehicles to progress in the game, being able to use anything and just upgrading the performance and upgrading the vehicle just to be able to beat the game and to and have the ability to use that vehicle for the whole game as long as you upgrade it along the way. That's what I want to see in the next game. So, so this is my wish list for Need for Speed Heat. I hope you guys did enjoy. Comment down below some things that you guys want to see in Need for Speed Heat. But I will leave this video here. Please take care. Peace.